The question is, what's going to go first? Will it be the bond market, the housing market, or the stock market? What, maybe even the derivative market? Who knows what will be first? Warren Buffett rips Wall Street for turning the stock market into gambling parlor, he says. This is on CNBC uh, last night. And I go back to this. If you treat these markets like a casino, ladies and gentlemen, these markets will treat you like a gambler. And remember, the house always wins. I'm no fan of uh, Warren Buffett, but he is 100% right here. He's not a dummy. He is correct. But again, people are gambling. They're not investing. They're gambling, looking for a quick buck. And so many people are going to get caught here, and they're going to get absolutely destroyed. Uh, another article today coming uh, from Market Watch. I think we're in the final innings. Pimco's Mark Keisel thinks the housing market has hit its top. Again, are any of us surprised? Will we be surprised when the housing market begins to fall? Absolutely not. All you have to do is look at mortgage apps right now. They have absolutely plunged. They have fallen off a cliff. Look at refis. They've fallen off a cliff. And I'm getting price reductions sent to me every day on the properties that I'm looking at. So what do you think? Comment down below. I think we have a perfect storm here of inflation, prices going up, uh, mortgage rates going up, and debt to income going up. And this spells a disaster for the housing market. And, and of course, all the, all the supply shortages to builders, it's just a matter of time. But I mean, all we have to do is simply connect the dots here, refis, mortgage apps, all of it plunging, and inflation, mortgage rates, wages, debt, all of it. This is going to be a catastrophic disaster for housing. Could this be worse than the two, 2008 collapse? No doubt about it. And people will say, well, th that happened because of all these exotic mortgages, interest only, adjustable rates. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, most of these uh, mortgages right now, 3% down. Most people do not have very much skin in the game. And we're beginning to see an increase in adjustable rate uh, mortgage loans out there. And again, when you have this type of inflation, eating people's savings, eating up their wages, they are one event away, one job loss away from big trouble. And that trouble will be the loss of a house. People are going to be forced to sell homes. But guess what? The market will be reversing at this time. And prices will be coming down in, in this so-called wealth that people thought that they had in their homes. Watch how fast it is vacuumed right out of the system. Uh, quickly, these markets can turn. People's equity can be eaten up as soon as prices begin to come down and people who, who, who felt so wealthy because they have the, the price of their home has gone up. So they feel wealthy, they go out and they spend more, they have more confidence. They believe everything is okay, even though their wages are being eaten up alive and they're paying more at the grocery store, they're paying more for utilities, but because their home doubled in the last two years, they feel everything is okay, they feel wealthy. Once those home prices begin to turn, and they're going to turn aggressively, and those prices coming down will accelerate. And when it does, these people have nothing left, and they're going to try to sell, they're going to try to get to the exits, they're not going to make it. These real estate agents out there uh, who are telling you this is, uh, this is the perfect time to buy, you're never going to get in, prices are only going to go up, these, these people are completely uh, uh, ill-informed or completely lying to you. Be very cautious of who you are listening to. These people rely on sales to make money. And, and just, I wonder how many of these real estate agents are going to answer the phone when these markets, when this housing market especially, begins to implode. People are upside down. Uh, people are losing massive amounts of equity in the house that they bought a year or two ago. They'll be calling their agents. But I wonder if their agents will be answering the phone. Another article today, buyers of a medium price home are looking at that monthly mortgage payment that is almost 50% higher than it was a year ago. What happens, ladies and gentlemen, when rates hit 6%? We're at 5.47 today, I believe, uh, maybe a little bit less. But uh, what happens when rates hit 6%? What's going to happen when they hit 7%? They said we wouldn't even hit 5% till the end of this year. We're not even in summer yet, and we're nearly 5.5%. And let's not forget, yet again, 5.46%. 5.46%, that's for people with the 750 FICA, 20% down, uh, minimal debt, perfect credit, right? The average person now is going to be paying over 7% for a 30-year, okay? So let's, let's not forget that. Deutsche Bank offices rated 
by police on money laundering. We talk about the dangers of banks. We know the ATM's been shutting down. We've seen banks shutting down. Uh, I spoke uh, a couple weeks ago about my local bank shut down for a few days. But the uh, bank offices in Frankfurt, Germany, of Deutsche Bank, are being searched by law enforcement authorities after the lender flagged potential money laundering. The search was due to a tip from the bank. The search involved suspicious transactions. It, ha it had itself passed on to authorities. Uh, this has been going on for years, ladies and gentlemen. These, these banks like Deutsche Bank have been fined billions of dollars for controlling markets, manipulating markets, money laundering. Uh, and you believe your money is safe. You believe your assets are safe in these banks. Uh, again, today's a great day to get your assets and your money out of the banking system. Get out of the system. The system is going down. The system uh, is melting up at this point and it is about to melt down. Is your money safe? Are your assets safe? Keep enough in there to pay the bills. I wouldn't keep much more in there. If, you, if you're going to do that, spread it around. Don't keep it all in one bank. These banks are in trouble and we're not being told exactly what is happening. The derivative market in serious trouble. Uh, these banks in trouble. When these rates go up, uh, we're gonna see more trouble in the banking system. So buyer beware. The hedge today, U.S. hotel rates hit record high prices despite occupancy remaining below pre-crisis levels. Who can afford to take a vacation now? And, and I can tell you from experience, just getting back from Las Vegas, I, I could not believe the prices of food, the room rates, uh, just the cost to uh, park your car. It, it's incredible. How many people are, are actually going to be able to go out and take a vacation? We were paying $6.70 for a gallon of gas at State Line. How many people are going to load up their family, put in six, six or seven dollars for gas, drive off and pay $300, $400, $500 a night for a hotel room, uh, $25 for a dinner? You go, put that on a family of four. These numbers uh, are astonishing. The national average for a hotel room in March rose to $146.61, the highest level for any month in history. On top of all this inflation, on top of the gasoline prices, on top of the food prices, occupancy slid, uh, went down 6.2% to 64%. None of the top 25 markets saw an increase in occupancy over the year 2019. San Francisco saw a stunning negative 23.4% drop in its occupancy from March of 2019. In total, U.S. Ho hotels sold 6.6 .6 million rooms uh, per night versus 7.8 million rooms in 2019. So way down and it, I, I think it's going to be a very, very difficult summer for most people to travel, even to get in a car where it used to be affordable to jump in the car, throw the kids in the car and go to the beach for a week or to Disneyland or, or wherever. Uh, now with gas prices, you go out to dinner. I can't even imagine to sit down uh, for a family of four to sit down at a restaurant, uh, especially if you're in Las Vegas, to sit down at a restaurant for four people uh, right now. Again, these numbers are astonishing. Who can do this? Urban hotels increased average daily room rates 56% month over month. Airport locations up 42%. And these rates are going to go higher for the summer. It's going to be very, very hard for people to do. A lot of people are just going to stay home, bottom line. Consumer spending shifts from goods to services. Inflation crushes incomes. This on wolfstreet.com. And I'm going to finish with this article today. Uh, I apologize if there's a little breeze uh, on the audio here, but we're getting a little bit of wind. There is no doubt cash out there. There's money out there. And, and just looking at what I saw in Las Vegas, the amount of people spending, gambling, eating, uh, incredible. But it is due to a lot of people that have cashed out in stocks, uh, crypto profits, um, which right now stocks and, and cryptos are declining. These profits right now are declining. Cash has been extracted out of home loans. Uh, last year, we saw a lot of people pulling out uh, cash, cash out refis, uh, people taking out seconds on their homes. Uh, they've got plenty of rooms, uh, plenty of room yet on the credit cards. So there, there is money out there. Where it came from, uh, again, cash out refis, cryptos, stocks, credit cards. But now 
uh, as the uh, credit cards begin to get tapped out, as the uh, stock market's being crushed, uh, we see what's happening in crypto being crushed. Uh, cr uh, uh, what are people going to do, especially when the, uh, the credit cards, when those balances get run up and uh, there is no more credit line on those credit cards? They're spending this money. There's no doubt. Uh, no doubt that there are people still out there spending. They cannot stop spending. And it's just like the ship is sinking, the music's playing, and nobody cares. But they're going to care here very, very soon. Because, again, the news flash is the stock gains are coming to an end. They are slowing down. Uh, we are seeing massive declines, big hits on, in the stock market. Uh, the cash out refis, over, over. And... It is only a matter of time before those credit cards run out, ladies and gentlemen. And when they do, where's all the money going to come from? The, sti the free money, the stimmies are over. And if there was some kind of miracle and they sent everybody $2,000, what is that going to do at this point? People are in big trouble. And many don't even seem to care. Millions continue to live for today and party on. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's incredible. It really is. Uh, I, I'm still befuddled with what I saw in Las Vegas and the amount of spending going on. But uh, last year, people cashed out. They did the cash out refis. Uh, they've made money in cryptos, in the stock market. But that's all changing now, right? We're seeing uh, right now, we're seeing this whole thing turn a corner. And it's about to get very, very ugly. Now, not to say that Monday the stock market can't go up 800, 900, or 1,000 points. Of course it can. They can juice these things. But the medicine is wearing off. We're, it's apparent. We're all seeing it now. We're seeing more massive volatility, massive big down days. It's not uncommon now to see the market go down 800, 900, 1,000 points. And uh, just imagine uh, what they're doing to try and just keep this whole thing afloat, the, the amount of manipulation that, that they're trying to do right now. Remember, we still have a Fed buying. We still have an expanding balance sheet. We still have a plunge protection team. What does this look like? when the Fed begins to aggressively raise rates